Using a convolutional neural network, let's build an image classification model that finds pizzas and not pizzas. Okay, so this will be our data set for this video. It has close to a thousand images of only pizzas and then close to a thousand images of other food types that are segregated as not pizzas. Now I use the OS module to create train test and validation folder to segregate the entire data set and then inside that I again segregated them to as pizzas and then not pizzas, which will contain all of our images like that. Now I copied their part which will be used in the code. I'll make sure to have a video on how I use the OS module to segregate these. Okay, we'll start by importing NumPy and we will also import matplotlib, fplt, import tensorflow, cf and then I will also import keras from tensorflow, import keras like that and then let's run this and we got that. Now I will be defining the train path, test path and the validation path from my folders. Now the original data set was acquired from Kaggle and it doesn't come with the split folder thing where the training data is split into train folder and then the test data is split into the test folder and similarly for the validation. I did this manually by myself using the OS module. We will have a video on that one as well. Now let's just run this. Now before providing all of these images to the model, you would generally pre-process this by using the image data generator, which can be imported from keras.preprocessing.image. We will import image data generator. Let's run this. And then let's create that. IDG will be image data generator. And then inside this, you would generally mention the rescale function by typing in 1 by 255. This is just changing the range of values of the RGB format to 0 and 1. Now let's just run that and use this to define our train images and the test images and the validation images. So train, test, and validation. First, I will do for the train. And we use this IDG to pre-process the images by using the flow from directory function. Directory. Inside this, you will first mention the directory, which will be the train path for the train set that we mentioned above. And then you will mention the target size, that is reshaping the image size to a size that we mentioned, which will be 224,224 for my case, and it would be generally done as well. Now also, we will have to mention the classes inside the folder. There's only two classes, that is not pizza, comma pizza, like that. We will also have to mention the batch size as well. That is the number of images that should be present in a specific batch. I'm just going to have this as 10. Now let's just close this. I'm just going to copy paste this for the rest. That is the test set and the validation set. I'm just going to paste this and then change the train path to test path. Do that over here as well. And then change this to validation path. Now inside the validation path alone, what I will do is type in shuffle to be false because we don't want the validation part to be shuffled at last when we're evaluating the model. I'm just going to have it like this and let's run our code. Now we get a message saying this that found images of a specific number inside a specific folder. You have to get it like this. If you get zero images found belonging to the two classes or anything related to that, then that means that there is a mistake in the code. You will have to check if the classes are mentioned correctly and also the directory part as well. Also make sure that the target size is mentioned correctly. Now, since we have done that, we will now visualize the data. First, I will create two variables, images and labels, and then extract that from the training data of the first batch. Now, what this will do is first, it will give the image path to the images variable, and then it will give the label of the image, that is whether it's a pizza or not pizza, to the labels variable. What I will do is create a for loop, and then inside this, I will first get the image path of a specific index by using images of i, getting the image path of the i-th index. And I'm also going to do that for the label, labels of i, like that. And now I will use plt.imshow. This is the function used to plot images. I will first pass in the image path, set the title to whether the specific image is a pizza or not pizza, which will be label, set axis to false, and then type in plt.show. Now let's run this. And we see that we have a specific image here. This looks like an ice cream, and hence it says that it's not a pizza. Whereas when you actually look at a pizza, right around here, it says that 0, 1 indicates that this is pizza, and then 1, 0 will indicate that this is not a pizza. We can do that for other batches as well. Just going to do that for, let's say, the fourth batch. 
we see a different set of images with the corresponding labels. We can also do that for the test set. Test. Let's just run this. And we still get a different set of images. This will be used for evaluating how the model is performing after training. So with that said, now it's time for us to create the model. We will need the sequential model, which I'm going to import right now. From keras.models, we will import sequential model. After this, we will now need to import all of the different layers that we will need. So from keras.layers, we will import first the dense layer, which is used as our output layer. And then we will need convolutional layer 2D. We will also import maxpo. I'll tell you what that is when we actually use it. I will also import flatten to convert the dimensions into one. Now let's just run that and create our model architecture. So our model will be sequential. And then inside this, you mentioned the architecture. First, we will have convolutional 2D network, 2D layer. First, we mentioned the filters. This is similar to the number of units mentioned in a dense layer. What this does is one filter will look at a specific area and then extract all of the data from it. And we will have 32 of such layers to look at the entire image. And now we will mention the kernel size. That is the size of each of the filters, which will generally be 3 comma 3. Now again, since one filter size is 3 comma 3, that much amount of area will be extracted from the image itself. And then the processing will be done. Now I will mention the activation function to be ReLU. And then I will mention padding. Same. Now padding refers to the spatial dimensions of the output from the input. Now, since we mentioned this to be same, the spatial dimension of the output from this layer will be the same as the input given from the previous layer or the input layer itself. And then since this is the input layer, I will mention the input shape to be, since we reshape the images to 224, 224, I will have that over here as well. And then since we have all of the images in RGB format, we will have three as one for red, one for green, and one for blue. And then the next layer will be max ball. So this first you mentioned the size to be two comma two. And then you also mentioned the strides to be two as well. Okay, so this is kind of hard to explain. So let's say that the input has come to this max ball layer. And then this size refers to creating a window. Let's say a window is created of the size two by two. Now, what happens is this window will stride over, let's say that this is the image that is given into this max ball. Now, this window will be striding over this entire image in a two by two fashion. And in each case of the window, the maximum value, that is why this is referred to as max ball, the maximum value inside a specific window case will be retained and all of the other values will be discarded. Now here, the maximum value refers to the most important information in that particular window. Now striding happens in a fashion of two. And then these are the most common values that will be provided to the functions respectively. And now since the max value or the most important feature value is retained and all of the other values are discarded, now the spatial arrangements or the spatial dimensions is just much lower or much smaller this way. Now that is what we want because now we can provide this to our next convolution layer and it's going to be much more easier to process. So let's just copy this and paste it over here. Make this 64. Also, since this is the hidden layer, we can just take this off like that. The input shape is not needed. Now I will use the flatten layer that we imported to change the dimension from two to one. And then now declare the dense layer as our output layer. Units will be two. And then now I will use the softmax activation function. Softmax for classification. Again, you can use sigmoid in this case as well, but then I'm just going to stick with softmax. Now let's just run this. This will be our model architecture. Oops, I forgot to close this. Now let's just run this. Change this to activation like that. And now run this over here as well. Yeah, so this will be our model architecture. Now it's time for us to compile the model. So type in model.compile. And then inside this, you will have to mention the optimizer, which we will import from Keras once again, from Keras but optimizes, we will import Adam, import Adam like that. And then I'm also going to import the loss function again from Keras dot metrics. We will import categorical cross entropy. Now notice that we are using the softmax activation function and hence we will have to import only the categorical cross entropy 
class entropy and let's just run this now come over here mention the optimizer to be atom and then the learning rate for my case the initial learning rate will be 0 0.0001 now I will mention the loss function which we just imported <coughs> again you can use the string function as well categorical cross entropy because this is already identified and then I'm just going to mention the metrics we will need the accuracy metrics like that to measure how the model is performing and then close this and then I will use the model.fit function with our training data x will be our training data and then we don't need to mention the output label because this is already included in the train data so we can just leave it as it is like this and the model will be able to identify it now the validation data will be our test data that we created above and then I'm going to mention the epochs that is the number of times the model has to run once again in terms of training this is going to mention this to be 15 and then verbose will be 2 because we want to see the maximum amount of detail while training so let's just run this and that's uh, for our model to train okay so the model has done training and we see at the 15th epoch for the training set our model has a stellar accuracy of 99.32 and the loss has come down to almost 0.05 and then when we actually look at the validation set the validation accuracy is just 73 percent and then the validation loss is just lingering around that 0.7 mark whereas when you look at the first epoch you see that the loss has been 0.67 and it has come down to 0.05 again for the validation loss it has actually increased from 0.6 to 0.7 so this is a prime example of overfitting where we say that the model has overfit the given training data or it overly understood the given training data so there is many ways to combat this one such what I'm going to show you now is just changing the architecture of the model so let me just copy this and paste it over here now what we said was the model overread the given training data so what we can do to combat that is first since this is an image classification model what we can do is we can rotate the image horizontally making it harder for the model to understand now this can be done by using the random flip layer I'm not going to import that let me just type that directly layers dot random flip and then mention horizontal just tilting the image itself horizontally making it harder for the model to understand also, I will use another type of layer, chaos.layers, which is random rotation, and then mention a degree rotation, and then mention a degree to be 0 0.2, that is tilting the image 20% towards the right or towards the left. This again makes it a bit harder for the model to understand. And also, what I will be doing is using a dropout layer. What this does is, so we have a connection over here from max pool to the convolution layer. What we will do is by using this dropout layer, keras.layers.dropout, we type in 0 0.25, we just cut that connection a little bit by a small amount of just, let's say 25% over here. Since we cut that connection, again, it's going to make it a bit harder for the machine to understand the given training data alone and making it more generalized when we provide the test set and the validation set and hence making the model a bit more reliable. I'm also going to do that over here as well keras.layers again you can import this at top but I'm just going to type it out directly dot layers dot dropout and then mention 25% now with this new architecture let's see how our model is performing let's just copy this compile variant and then fit the training data once again paste it over here let's just run that oops I forgot to put a comma over here and here let's run that and now we will have to play the waiting game for our model to train. Okay, so the training for the second model is done as well. And we know that the loss value initially has been 0 0.7. And then the loss value for the validation set is 0 0.63. And then when we come all the way down, we see that the loss value has come down to 0 0.52, which is reasonable when understanding the training data and the test data. And we can also look at the loss value for this one, which is 5.6. Again, it's fine. And the maximum accuracy that I was able to acquire by changing by changing this architecture method was around 77% for both. Now you can try out many different things such as changing the epochs value to maybe 20 or 25 or just or just adding in more convolution layers or changing the filter values and also changing the random rotation degree. And then if you're able to get an accuracy value that is more than 77%, then please let us know. It's going to be really, really helpful.
With that said, it is possible to have a very good accuracy number by using the method of pre-trained models such as VGG16. We have a separate video telling what is that and how it is being used, where we will also use the validation set and confirm the model. It will be linked if it's released.